morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Welcome everybody who's watching online as well. For those who haven't been here before, we are a weekly networking event where we offer uh, presentations on uh, the subjects uh, technology and or design. Uh, afterwards, we also offer drinks uh, to get the conversation going further, uh, and we can also uh, offer you a dinner for 17 euro 50 at the meetup table. Tonight we have uh, Tortello with Porcini on offer. Um, and tonight we have as a guest Cor Dadna from Dynaction, who will tell us about his uh, scanners that will, might come to our airports sometime soon. Um, and uh, yeah. I wish you a lot of fun with this presentation. Thanks, Anoop. All right. So my name is Kort Datema. I'm the CEO for Danexion. Um, Danexion is a startup company here in Eindhoven at the High Tech Campus. Um, we are developing a new type of security scanning system based on neutrons. And the next 20 minutes, I'll take you through some of the technology challenges that we have and uh, also a little bit about the outlook of uh, where we're going. Um, it's, um, we are a deep tech startup. It's, uh, we started in 2019 and we are now um, slowly getting uh, progress, but um, hopefully in the, in the next three to four years, we will see the first products coming uh, onto the market. Um, first, I would like to start with some facts. So uh, maybe you uh, um, don't know this, but uh, there are over 400 terrorist, terrorist attacks uh, in airplanes um, in the last, since 9-11. Uh, and um, those terrorist attacks uh, have occurred uh, not only um, in airports, uh, but also in, actually uh, in flying planes. This is an example of a, a plane that was uh, a suicide bomber um, uh, in 2016, blew a hole in the side of the uh, plane. And uh, these kind of uh, things will keep happening. And um, if we talk to the specialists uh, from the NCTV, for example, they say these, these threats are only getting bigger. Um, then the next thing is, is, is that the, the Department of Homeland Security in the US has uh, done some research on um, how effective the security screening is. And the results were actually astonishing. Uh, in 2015, they found that 95% of all hidden and explosives and, and, and uh, guns were not detected by staff and the uh, security screening uh, systems. So this is, is, is really quite shocking, and I think um, and there is a really a need to improve this. Oh, sorry, that was the wrong button. Um, Another problem that I think we can, uh, uh, that not everybody realizes, but um, based on the latest numbers from the US, more than 100,000 people die yearly from an overdose of an opioid. And this opioid crisis has been going on for years in the US and is now also coming to Europe. We already in Europe, we also more than 10,000 uh, people have died this uh, last year from an overdose. On the other side, uh, everybody um, keeps uh, buying stuff online and there is a huge amount of um, parcels shipped around the world every uh, day. And um, less than 1% of all these parcels is being checked on uh, illegal substances. So uh, if I send something uh, to someone in America, the chances of someone actually opening and looking what's inside is, m is minimal. So uh, I can send whatever I like uh, and this could also be drugs, and this happens a lot. And finally, I think this is a more recent example. Uh, maybe some of you have experienced this, but um, uh, the, the long queuing at airports is becoming a real problem. And uh, partly it's because of the security staff is really difficult to get, uh, to find and uh, to uh, do these um, rather uh, boring but laborious uh, tasks in the screening uh, uh, department. So. Um, all this together, um, I would say uh, we need to conclude that terrorism is bigger than ever and current streaming methods are not sufficient. Also, um, we are losing the war on drugs and um, the transportation of illegal drugs is, is really simple. Then the current screening uh, process is very labor intensive 
and you just are not able to get the, 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 the staff anymore, so that needs to be automated. And therefore, I conclude that we need better security screening. And that's where we come in. Because let's first talk about X-ray. 99% of all security screening is based on using X-ray. But X-ray systems are um, really uh, quite poor. They have limited sensitivity. Uh, they can see maybe the difference between a metal and organic material, but they cannot distinguish between or, uh, individual organic materials. Um, then also uh, they are using uh, the information both from the atomic number and the density, and based on that they say whether it's something is, uh, is a threat. Uh, unfortunately, there is a big overlap between the areas of threat and non-threat materials if you use this method. So intrinsically, this method, in our view, will never be able to distinguish uh, uh, very well between uh, threat and non-threat materials. Um, this leads to really high false alarm rates, um, 20 to 30 percent false alarm with the current X-ray systems. So the other thing is that uh, penetration is a problem with X-ray. Uh, this is an example of, of a bag where you see some black spots, typically qu quite dense materials, and um, X-ray, as soon as an X-ray system sees these uh, black images, they will have to go to an operator for uh, further checking. Um, and then the operators uh, are really important that they are well trained, um, that they are uh, uh, trying to find the right stuff and don't uh, have problems with uh, alarm fatigue. Um, they uh, can even, they're even a security threat because uh, uh, people can be easily bu um, bribed to uh, let certain things pass. So let me introduce you uh, Dynexion Scanner. The Dynexion Scanner is precise and highly accurate it can determine the content to, on the atomic level. It is non-invasive and is fully automated, so we don't need any humans. And we can detect all prohibited materials simultaneously. So how do we do this? Um, for this, we have uh, made a small video that I would like to um, uh, share with you. And uh, if I press the next button, the video will start. No, no. Dynaxion Security introduces Dynascan, a technology which combines nuclear physics and AI algorithms in order to provide an accurate and automated security screening solution. As parcels pass through the Dynascan system, the particle accelerator, which is placed on the center top of the system, creates a neutron beam towards the parcel and irradiates it. As neutrons interact with atoms in the investigated object, they produce gamma rays that are registered by the detectors positioned on both sides of the parcel transportation system. These events contribute to an energy spectrum that is material specific. Each neutron, after the interaction with the atoms of the materials inside the parcel, continues its path until it is finally detected by a neutron detector. The signal from this detector contributes to another spectrum that provides further information about the elements and location of the investigated materials inside the parcel. Now, the artificial intelligence algorithms come into play, analyzing the data from the detectors and determining the content of the parcel, as well as the certainty level of whether it is an illegal or legal substance. If the certainty level is high enough, the suspected parcel is automatically taken out of the queue. Dynascan, security screening technology for a safer world. is so innovative. First of all, it starts with the neutron source. We have uh, access to um, really the latest and greatest in neutron sources. Um, it's uh, based on a particle accelerator. It can get, generate high uh, neutron flux. And it is also uh, one of the large advantages is that we're creating a neutron beam. So we do not spread neutrons all over, but we create a, a, effectively a neutron beam. Then we have a patented um, uh, scanning system where we create 3D volumes where we get in our spectral information from the object. Uh, we also designed a new neutron uh, imaging system which um, will uh, provide image information about the location where the hidden substance is uh, located. 
And we use uh, gamma ray detectors um, for uh, getting uh, the spectral uh, analysis. And we use here um, the multi-grid uh, gamma ray detection system uh, with very high count rates uh, we can achieve. Of course, there's some shielding required because we're using radiation. And this uh, shielding um, system that we designed is rather uh, um, new. We have a double uh, layer uh, shielding system and uh, that makes it possible to make a compact system uh, which is comparable with an X-ray system that you currently will find at the airport. And then the last thing, you already saw it in the video, is the AI stuff. Um, we are able to combine the spectral and image information to provide more information about the content of uh, what's inside the, uh, the, the parcel or uh, bag. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the neutron generator. The neutron generator is based on the radio frequency quarter pole. Um, here I'll show you an image of what it looks like. It's uh, actually it's a cavity, a vacuum cavity with um, a really high electric uh, field inside, which is modulating and provides the acceleration potential for uh, particles to go through the, exactly the center part. Um, we have created one which is uh, 5 m mega electron volt, which is the optimal energy that we require for the purposes uh, of security screening. Um, we can pulse it, uh, which also is needed to, to differentiate between different types of signals. And uh, it's low power, it's compact, it's affordable, and this is, these are all uh, really important aspects to the current uh, source that we have. We use the fusion uh, reaction, deuterons on deuterons, and uh, the, um, on average, the energy that uh, we'll, we'll get from, from this is a neutron with an energy of about 3 MeV. And uh, because we are accelerating uh, the uh, deuteron, um, uh, it uh, adds up to the 5 MeV that we already uh, provided as the in initial energy. So we're getting 8 MeV neutrons for our system. Um, then one of the key things that I already uh, said, told you is that uh, it's, it's highly forward directed. This plot shows you uh, the, uh, the energy, um, the amount of neutrons generated in the different, under different angles. So if you look, for example, um, that's the pointer. Surely I tested it before. Anyway, so um, if you look uh, uh, between 0 and 20%, you'll see that most of the intensity of the beam is in the forward direction, and you see that there's very little uh, neutrons uh, are spread in the, in the, in the rear uh, of the system. Um, so the neutron imaging system is also um, quite spectacular because uh, everybody knows X-ray imaging as, as being, uh, uh, we can look inside of, of, of objects. Um, but uh, that is very much uh, related to the, uh, the, the uh, atomic number of the um, um, elements that are inside of the object. And uh, the uh, cross-section or the, the chances of an interaction of an X-ray or a neutron are very different. And that's what is shown here in this, in this uh, diagram. And if you would compare that then in an, a real image, you see that in, in an X-ray image, the bottom image, you'll see that the, the metallic objects are um, more uh, clearly visible. And in the top image, you'll see that more the plastics and the lower Z materials are much clearer visible. So the combination of the two actually provides us even more information. Um, Gamma ray detection is also a large part uh, for us because um, the process is the following. Um, a fast neutron hits an, a nuclei and then um, it uh, excites this nucleus and when it de-excites, uh, it sends out a, a gamma ray and that gamma ray is specific for the nucleus. So um, by using a, a spectra, we can actually determine what the material inside. And um, this this is a diagram of uh, different spectra of different materials. And what you can clearly see is, is that every material has its own spectrum. And just by identifying these spectra, we can uh, tell something about what's inside of the object. 
Okay, then um, the next thing is the AI engine that we have developed. And uh, first of all, um, here uh, on the left side, you see the sensing part where the data comes in. And we uh, are using gamma ray information, but uh, per voxel, so per volume element of the object that we're looking at, we can create a, a spectrum. So we get uh, maybe uh, 50 different spectra. And those are all being analyzed by the AI in combination with the uh, images from the X-ray and the neutrons. Then it goes into a deep learning uh, algorithm which is trained by uh, training data. And here is where something uh, quite unique uh, comes forward in, for our system, is that we have been able to create realistic training data um, purely based on simulations. And this is uh, important because you need accurate training data to, uh, for your AI to work uh, properly. And um, we uh, can completely uh, simulate the detector response, the geometry of the system, and even things like uh, 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 um, we have a random parcel generator in which we uh, can change the order and the, the content of every parcel that we create data for. And then we have the images and the gamma ray uh, information and that we use for training for the AI. And then uh, the uh, analyzing part gives us either a, a threat or a benign uh, response. And if it is a threat, it can give you the confidence on how, um, how big of the threat it thinks it is and uh, what the suspect material is that it's looking at. We've created a proof of concept system in the last year. And um, that uh, is shown here. So it's a big houtje touwtje still, but it works. Um, so the setup, um, we have a, a neutron source uh, with uh, an, an object platform, uh, which we move the object through the beam. We have our gamma detection system. We have a neutron imaging system behind. And uh, this all, um, then uh, we try to create uh, enough data for um, 16 different uh, materials is shown here. Um, we've used some benign materials or some simulants for uh, drugs or for explosives. And we then um, uh, took an average of about 400 to 500 grams of each material and put those in the beam. Then we had the AI uh, do the analysis part and we, were, uh, we could uniquely identify every single uh, one of these uh, materials. So without actually looking what's inside, we could still tell the difference between a pot of sugar or salt or uh, melamine or um, any type of material. And that's already rather unique that you can do this uh, remotely. But the next step is, of course, to do this also for um, more complex structures. And that's uh, what we're working on for the future. Um, the other thing is, is that we did is we created some uh, really high resolution neutron images. Uh, this is, uh, um, I'm quite proud of, this, this image was taken um, of a plastic print, 3D printed um, object of 5 by 5 centimeters, but uh, inside uh, 5 centimeters of lead. Um, there's no X-ray machine that can actually create this image, and we were perfectly able to create a, a sub-millimetric resolution image of, uh, of this object. So here you can see the added value of also using the neutron imaging uh, of the system. So what's next? Um, we, um, we're, going to, uh, we're looking for uh, some additional funding to build a demonstrator system. Uh, the timeline for the project is about 18 months in which we're going to build uh, in our own facility because um, we are located here at the high-tech campus, but we have a unique facility where we have access to a radiation um, a lab, um, basically a, a bunker that was built by Philips in the 80s and uh, is now uh, vacant, and we can use that environment to build our own system in and uh, then test it uh, in the next 18 months. Um, the, the focus areas for our, our, our company in the, in, the, in the near future are uh, on the one side the AI development. Um, we need more data scientists. We're going to uh, build the team around uh, the, uh, the analysis part. But on the other side, we also still have a lot of uh, uh, um, people uh, required for doing the, the hardware development. And there uh, we talk about neutron generation or the detection systems and the overall system architecture. And um, then uh, next to what we've been looking at for uh, the uh, system is that 
uh, not only this is interesting for security screening, we are also more and more talking to uh, um, other customers that want to only use certain parts of the system. For example, the substance identification um, would be really nice to be able to use that, for example, for, um, uh, and, and this is one of the requests we had, can we detect PFAS? PFAS is a, is, is, is a material that is uh, man-made, but is, is in, in nature, and we are not able to detect it accurately at the moment. But our system is, uh, we've already shown that we can detect it to a certain level, and we still need to go uh, to lower levels. But this is something that is the substance identification part could really start uh, um, become very interesting. Um, on the other side, we're talking to uh, one of the world's largest steel manufacturers uh, about finding small cracks uh, in steel, in really thick layers of steel, talking 20 centimeters of steel. Um, and we've um, done some modeling on it, and we believe that we can, even then, can do submillimetric uh, uh, cracks, find cracks in, in, in large steel objects. So these kind of uh, new uh, applications and just strengthen us our idea that this, this is a system that we need to uh, get in place and we're working hard to get it uh, in our lab. Um, thank you for your attention. And if there's any questions, please shoot. I'll be walking around. <laughs> For any questions, I'll be walking around just to make sure everything's audible on the live stream. Hi, hey, interesting uh, story, but I'm always interested. What is the biggest challenge you have in this design? The biggest challenge? Um, yeah, the, there's, there's many challenges, of course, still ahead of us, but... Um, maybe, maybe. <laughs> okay, so... Um, one of the things that um, we, we're currently uh, trying to do is, is, is to build uh, uh, the next generation uh, neutron generator. So the first one that we used for the, for the pilot system, the, the proof of concept, um, was not optimal for our, 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 our purposes. And we were actually a little bit on the low side of the energy and the output was also not um, big enough. So when you start increasing the power, uh, you also start encountering new problems and uh, we need to get rid of a lot of heat that is generated um, we need to uh, in, use new power amplifiers um, cooling uh, that there's there's still some challenges there um, on the other side on the detection side we we seen that we can get uh, um, submillimetric resolution on the neutron imaging side but that's not that's limited by our system at the moment and we know that we can improve on it but it's also a trade-off of, of um, um, how your sensitivity is of your, of your detector. But if we uh, can offer a little bit of sensitivity, we can increase even the, the resolution down to maybe even 100 micrometers. And that would be really then you can compare it with X-ray. At the moment, we are not at the, at the par with X-ray imaging. Um, and then I think another challenge for us from a technical perspective is, is, is the, the uh, speed at which we need to do the scanning. Um, there's always a trade-off between how big is the volume um, element that you want to scan and how long does it take you to scan the object. And there, uh, the challenge is, is, is what is still acceptable for a, a, a one of our customers. And um, we've decided at the moment that we think that a cube, uh, 5 by 5 by 5 centimeter volume is something that our customers would be happy with, which is about 200 grams of material. So lower than 200 grams of an explosive or a drug, uh, this, with this current system, we're not able to detect. But that's a challenge for the future. Yeah, so thanks for the nice presentation. And you already answered my question, so throughput is indeed a challenge. Uh, the other thing I wonder about is um, you have a consumable in there that the target Mm -hmm. How do you, do you have a concept already how you're going sure. to refuel that? Yeah, yeah. well there are, there are actually multiple consumables in the system, yeah. but um, if you look at the target, uh, we have a solid target, which is um, a deuterated titanium target, mm -hmm. and that um, uh, the lifetime of the target, if we run pretty much full, full time, is, is, is about half a year. So after six months, we have to exchange it. But there is actually a valve in the system, so we can actually change the valve 
uh, take out the, 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 the old um, target, put a new target in, which can be already stored on site. So it's a pretty quick uh, uh, turn over time. And then the, what the nice thing about this is, is that the old target can be regenerated. So we can actually inject deuterons again in that old target and just uh, uh, use it as it is new again. Yeah, okay. And uh, a second maybe naive question. So if I have a moderator in my back, I'm shielding my... Yeah. So, so, that is, that is, so I'm not using lead in the future, but sure. a big water bottle. You should not tell everybody that, but yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, of course, uh, moderation uh, to a certain yeah. extent will uh, um, start to uh, be a problem for us. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, um, we, uh, we can go through 50 centimeters of moderator. Oh, so okay. um, yeah. that will not be uh, enough uh, to in your bag. But uh, one of the, the things that people ask us for is, can you go bigger? Because uh, can you do container scanning or can you do um, freight uh, scanning or... or, or um, um, but these kind of larger systems and the huge amounts of moderator material that you would uh, then uh, use, then at some point we might run into problems, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have, I have a few other questions regarding that, but we take that off. And thanks a lot, very yeah. interesting. You're welcome. Thank you as well for the presentation. Um, I had a question about the, the narrative of developing this product, because um, the narrative around uh, the war on drugs um, and things like that, they usually single out people, and the security scans at airports, they single out people based on stereotypes. Mm -hmm. um, do, do you in any way sort of focus on that aspect of it as well, and if so, how? Um, no, we, uh, actually, we, we work together with the customs organization, and uh, they they are very good at this, and they uh, they do this. But um, it's not our task to. Uh, we're really the the people side of it is is not uh, we're not interested in. We're only looking at the at the at the material side, and it, we're really agnostic for whoever puts this back in our system. And um, um, the, one of the things that people sometimes ask me is, is uh, at, at some point, I can, the system is capable of, for example, even telling the difference between what kind of deodorant or what kind of shampoo or what kind of toothpaste you're bringing. And at that moment, um, also, uh, a lot of things around privacy uh, you can, can play up. Uh, so we're training our AI currently only to recognize uh, threat materials. So that's, we, we are not interested in all that other stuff. Okay. But you might save all these spectrums for, la for later usage? Um, actually, we're not allowed to, to save them more than 24 hours, I think. So that's not uh, really uh, 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 useful, but we don't really need that information because... Uh, sorry? Maybe other people that might need it. At some point, yes, maybe. But that's a, that's a different discussion, I think. So since this subject came up, uh, uh, I, I have only, you know, observed this uh, for, for a short time, but I was, I was surprised to learn actually that a lot of these uh, security screening have the function to annoy people. Uh, so, so did you consider that in your business case? You know, it's, it's a naive picture that uh, screening 100% provides you security. Yeah? Mm -hmm. There's, there are other concepts and, and uh, often the screening has the function, yeah, to make a potential criminal nervous so that he's spotted by, let's say, a psychologist observing the area. Yeah. Um, well, we have not really considered that too much because uh, we're focusing initially on a hold luggage. So that's the checked baggage uh, that goes through. And um, the, uh, the screening for hand luggage is something that um, putting our system quite uh, close to, uh, and we, there's not a lot of space for our type of systems. And because initially we were going to be quite big, we'd rather be in the basement at Schiphol and, and do, the, do the, just the suitcases. The last question here. So, so being a startup is, uh, is one step. Mm -hmm. Being becoming a company is a uh, complete different one. Eh? Security, how do they trust you that your system will stay there for 20 years? So what is your longer term roadmap? Yeah, so, so there are we still this, this, there are still different scenarios for that, of course. But um, 
um, we like to become the ASML of the, of the, of the security uh, business. So we um, want to deliver the full system, do the service of the system, um, and, and make sure that our customers are, are happy with the system. But we also realize that the current players in, in the security market, and there are, let's say, four or five really big players in the market, and as soon as we're coming onto the market with this neutron scanner, they will also try to uh, copy us and they will also uh, come onto the market. But one of them will lag be, uh, behind and they might say, okay, this is an interesting company to work together with. And at that stage, uh, of course, uh, it would be uh, maybe even more beneficial to use uh, uh, one of these strategic partners and, 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 and work together or, or, or have a buyout. Um, but yeah, that's something that, uh, that, that it can, can also be uh, happening. So Van der Leefde might be the better one. Yeah, Van der Lande. Uh, Van der Lande, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that could all be, and, uh, and we actually have one of uh, their former employees as in our uh, advisory board, and uh, we le already learn a lot from them, and at some point maybe there is going to be, uh, yeah, some transaction. Yeah. I think uh, it's good to round things off now. Thank you so much for your presentation. It was very yeah. interesting. I'm uh, sorry for interrupting your applause just now. It's just we do it uh, again uh, when I round things off. Um, so thank you for your presentation. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for watching online. Hopefully uh, I can uh, receive you soon here uh, on location. Um, I suggest we go out for drinks now at the bar at the front of the restaurant and uh, carry on talking about this. Uh, feel free to join at the meetup table. Um, I'll uh, come and ask you again later if you're interested. Um, please drink, bring your glasses with you um, if you have them here. Um, and next week we have um, Ismini here in collaboration with Caravan Cultura about death, grief, grief and nourishment. Uh, so check that out on the website. Um, and after that, we'll be going on recess for a month, uh, but we'll be back in September. Uh, so yeah, hopefully we'll see you next week. And if so, have a lovely evening. <laughs>